You're listening to Kayak Flyer with your host, Sean. Tonight, we're brought to you by Tennessee Trailers, OutdoorAdventureTrailers.com. Simply the best way to get your kayak to and from the water. Bajuco Flats Flyco. Simply the best custom-made fly rods on the market. Always built to order just the way you want it. Find Bajuco Flats Flyco on Instagram and Facebook. Stoneflynets.com, made 100% in the great state of Arkansas with your choice of woods or burls. Stonefly Nets can even be customized for that favorite fisher person in your life. Check out Stoneflynets.com for details. Cutthroatfurledleaders.com, the only leaders that I fish with. Cutthroat Furled Leaders are excellent for saltwater, freshwater, trout, bass, you name it, you can catch it with a Cutthroat Furled Leader. Head to cutthroatfurledleaders.com, promo code kayak to save 15%. Guys, I don't know about you, but it has been absolutely wild. Um, I'm doing the other podcast now uh, with 19 Delta Bait and Stacey Howe Fishing called Essential Outdoorsman. Man, I am getting schooled on lures because I'm a fly fisherman, and it's a lot of fun. And those guys have been absolutely great. And you know, Adam, another great guy that everybody needs to get to know is Nick Dooley. Yeah, yeah, you bet. Yeah, for sure. Nick has a great online fly shop, um, and what he's got is he's got 15% off with promo code KAYAK for all you guys and gals out there in Fisherland that listen to us. So Nick is sort of helping out the show by giving out that discount and letting people share in some of the great products that he has. And one of the products, and I know, Adam, you're, you're looking at getting one ASAP. I got one last month. Um, a student of mine, a former student, uh, emailed me and wanted to know about fly tying. And I said, hey, I said, this is the perfect time. I said, you need to get a hold of Nick Dooley over at Dooley's Fly Fishing. Dot com use promo code kayak to save 15 percent. i said you can get a fly medic box so he got the rainbow warrior box which is a great fly to start tying and i tied up a bunch of those over the weekend myself i think they're going to be killer nick welcome to the show hey how's it going good buddy really good um the fly medic kit i've seen a lot of these monthly subscription kits where you get you know i just flies but to actually get the materials in to tie that fly and then to have the demo, you know, I mean, even even the, the poor demo I put together is better than nothing at all. So you're, you're yeah, really, definitely. Yeah, you're really so nailing it over kind there. Of designed it to be. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's going good. We sold a lot more of them than I ever thought we would. Yeah, and I know that, you know, speaking from experience and with having a new fly tire, the beginner fly box, but now you're going to have the beginner, the advanced, the warm water, the salt water. I mean, there's a ton of stuff out there. It looks like you've got sort of a redfish uh, crack, I guess is what they call that one fly. It looks that that's mm-hmm. coming out in the salt this, this month, and, and uh, I guess it'll be the March fly box. But, man, that is a super-looking fly. You've got mm-hmm. a small bug for trout. The bass streamer looks like it comes with one of the metal fish skulls heads. You know, when you go out to buy all this stuff to make these patterns, you're making a substantial investment. And if you're not sure you want to tie it, you know, I mean, Adam, you you can speak from experience. You tie super small bugs, but here you're looking at starting to tie streamers. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, you know, Nick, what I I love about this is, you know, for somebody that's just starting out, um, and, and fly tying and maybe doesn't have any direction or we're all, you know, limited to what we can do as far as going out in public and, and whatnot these days, the ability to just include everything in the fly medic kit is just, it's brilliant because you take all the guesswork out of it, right? Like if you, you don't know what size of hook to tie a particular pattern in, if you're just kind of like, Hey, I, I like fly fishing, or maybe you're brand new to fly fishing in general, but you know, tying is a whole different world, which we're all, we all know about, right? But when you're first cracking into it, man, I, you're just, you're, without any guidance, it's really hard to stay confident and also stay involved in continuing to tie. And this just takes all the guesswork out of it. So I think it's a brilliant idea. Yeah, you know, the funny thing. Yeah, we've thing, got a lot of brand new guys that are buying these. Yeah, go ahead, Nick. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to step on you there. So... No, you're good. 
we've got a lot of brand new guys that are buying these that started the first month we did it and they've bought it every month and you know in five or six months they're going to have six patterns that they know how to tie inside and out plus all the extra materials that come with it so it's mm -hmm. kind of a good way to build up your materials and learn flies individually you know that was one of the <clears> things <throat> for me being a streamer guy and i remember i the first one i posted on facebook i got some hate man i'm not gonna lie all of my streamer buddies were like what are you doing tying a trout fly um <laughs> But for me, who I don't tie anything under a size 10, you know, I generally tie on a one ot or a two. You know? <laughs> I tie those big flies. And this was easy enough that even me with my progressive lens bifocals and everything else, I could sit down and tie it. And I was very confident after the first three or four, which I'm going to give to a friend, um, I was very, very confident with the fly. And I know Adam's sort of the same way, you know. Mm -hmm. So especially in that basic kit, we're trying to pick out patterns that are not just the easy ones. You know, you see the San Juan worms and the green weenies and all these really super basic patterns. Just trying to find patterns that they can tie easily that also look good and are going to catch fish. Yeah, You know, I'm, I'm curious, Nick. Um, you know, we talk about the ease of tying a fly, but even sometimes a fly might be easy to tie, but it might involve eight different material. If you're just starting out, like, that's intimidating in and of itself. So when you're putting these together, do you do you keep that in mind as well as in terms of limiting how much it's in, involved in terms of material, let alone just the skill set? Like, is there more to it than that? Yeah, on the basic ones, for sure I do. Uh, the advanced ones, I'm trying to find stuff that is kind of off the wall, things that people don't normally tie or a different way of tying it, um, just to kind of challenge people who have been tying a while and also give them something cool to tie as well. I've got a great fly for your warm water box. I believe I sent Is it you. the one we already talked about? Yeah, I think that's going to be killer if you put that together for the warm water box. Yeah, if you could see over it. my shoulder here, I've got a like 55-gallon drum full of stuff from that company that we've been talking about that just came in today. Oh, so. yeah. Do you want to go ahead and – I teased it last time, but why don't you go ahead and drop the news? So uh, now we're going to be a fly tires dungeon dealer. Um so we've added a bunch of companies in the last two weeks. We've added Fly Tires Dungeon. We've added Risen Fly Rods, uh, Vicuna Dubbing, and we've upped our inventory on Eric's hooks. So we've got all kinds of stuff. And not tooting our own horn or anything, but I've been searching the web and all the other fly shops. I think adding this Fly Tires Dungeon gives us the most top-to-bottom extensive collection of anywhere out there. So. You know, and Fly Tires Dungeon, and I know Adam and I have talked about this at length. The listeners of the podcast have heard me say this. I blew them off as being someplace I wasn't going to buy from because they were just obnoxiously cheap and it couldn't be worth it. And I put my foot in my mouth. I broke down and I said, if I'm going to try this stuff, and I went and ordered the warm water box. And it was 42 bucks, And it's like, you're getting $170 worth of stuff. Dude, you do. You get $200 worth of stuff when you buy from this guy. I mean, the dubbings alone, you know, and you're going to be priced the, just the same. But, like, the one problem there is with going through Fly Tires Dungeon is I need this extra. And he just doesn't have it. He's got hooks now. He announced today he dropped his hooks. Did he send you any of those? Uh, no. Uh -uh. I got a ton of dubbing, a ton of Congo hair. Uh, a few other things like that. Man, that bait fish with that. Oh, man, those bait fish look beautiful, Fly Tires Dungeon. Um, but he's now got hooks. The smallest one's one ot. And I went out here, and Adam, I don't know if I sent you the photo or not. I took a hammer, and I hammered that hook into a piece of oak that I had for firewood. Pulled it out with the pliers, tapped my finger with it, nearly drew blood because I didn't tap it that hard hammered it back in and that bad boy was still sharp yeah. and did not bend a lick. Um, so that's really impressive for those guys who are musky fishing, who are fishing for pike, especially guys that are out looking for gar, you know, some of the big, big hook fish, saltwater fish. I mean, that's amazing. And I sent you some of those in the mail, buddy. 
Yeah. Gosh, those are just, that's just a testament to the type of quality that you're going to get with Fly Tires Dungeon. So, Nick, having that available in your fly shop is, is huge. Um, maybe it's not hooks, but like you said, all the other, the dubbing and, and, uh, um, uh, the, the, oh my God, I just, just totally blanked out on it. But all the material, thank you, the Congo hair. Yeah. You've got two packs um, I mean, in front of you. I know. I, li- I looked out the corner of my eye and I was like, sitting right there. Um, yeah, man, like that's that's super exciting. Uh, Sets you apart too, no doubt. Yeah, I couldn't believe it when we opened the box. Just how the colors pop and everything just looks awesome. It's, yeah. it's yeah. I'm pretty impressed. Yeah, if you've never used it, head over there to DooleysFlyFishing.com, and once he gets that on the website, and it'll, by the time this airs, it'll be on the website. Buy mm-hmm. some stuff, man. Buy some stuff. You're gonna love it. It's great, and uh, we can put out. Uh, if somebody wants to go to the Kayak Flyer YouTube page, they can see me tying the bait fish. You can get everything you need right there for the bait fish and tie that bad boy up. It's a great fly. Um, I'm pretty excited to have it. Yeah. What was the other dubbing? It's got a, you, you mentioned it, it's got a weird name and is it made with llama? Yeah, it's Vicuna. It's made with alpaca. alpaca. Um, I'm the first place in the U.S. to carry, actually the first place in North America to stock it. Um, oh, cool. I had a little run with them about six months ago. I bought a little order. Um, it sold through fairly slow, but they've changed a lot of stuff and I just got a huge amount in a couple of weeks ago and we're going to push that pretty hard. It's actually going to be in our March box. So cool. You know, I would be interesting to see, I've never messed with any alpaca dubbing. I'd be interesting to see what that really excels at. I think that would be a great thing to look at. It's like a hair's ear dubbing on steroids. It's, oh. it's super buggy, but you can dub it down really fine and pick it out. Yeah, I've actually tied with it myself. Not necessarily that company, but I've tied with Alpaca, and it's it's different, man. Like if you're looking to to do something that's um, going to give it a little bit of a different texture than you're than you're used to using in your dubbing, that's it's certainly a way to go. So that's uh, that's pretty exciting for you. I would order some, but I would get in trouble for cheating on the mad scientist. <sighs> <laughs> I'm no longer allowed I'll to smuggle buy. some in a pack for you. How about that? <laughs> I'm no longer allowed to buy dubbing. I have so much of it. I went uh went the other day and got some of those uh bench loops from Loon. Mm-hmm. Have you seen those? Yeah. Man, I have like four of those filled yeah. up with different types of dubbing from Fly Tires Dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> but my my fly tying desk looks great. <laughs> um but, you know, there's just so much stuff out there. I wish mine did. Uh, yeah, hey, dude, I'm telling you, I would have never, I'm not a gimmicky kind of guy. I would have never thought about those. But, man, I just hang them up, and I've got all the uh, all the bug backs and, and simple scud, simply scud. All those are right there. And so I just grab, if I'm tying scuds, I grab one thing. If I'm grabbing streamers, I grab another one. I just have them all sitting right there. It works out great. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, it's it's nice. I I really I really like it a lot. Um, but you've got some other. You mentioned a couple other things there with Risen. Can you talk a little bit about that? So Risen Fly Rods is an American based company. Uh, they just do fly rods for me, fly rods and reels. Um, I got quite a few in. I got myself an eight weight that I'm going to fish with, but they're all super good quality. They've got a hundred percent warranty and i'm pretty excited to have those as well cool cool and what about a vice can you talk about any vices yet yeah i uh just got norvice uh three or four days ago i'm going to start selling those i've actually already sold three of them um so that just kind of shows you the diversity we've got 85 cent fly tires dungeon dubbing and 700 dollars Norvice Vice is on the same site. Yeah. So. yeah. Wow, those, that's amazing. Those yeah, Norvices cool. are no joke, man. Mm-hmm. I was going to get Adam yeah. one for Christmas, but. I wasn't good enough. Yeah. No, just Maybe good. next year. Yeah, maybe yeah. he'll be worth $700 <laughs> next year. Things <laughs> keep going open. good. I think I'm going to spoil myself with one. There you there go. You go. <laughs> they didn't just give you a free one out of kindness? No, they didn't. Oh. Maybe we can work on that. Yeah, you, you got to <laughs> wear them down, man. You got to be like me and just pester yeah. them to death. <laughs> Yeah, they're not hurting to get their name out, though, are they? There's no, no test uh-huh. runs needed right now. Yeah. <laughs> I was looking at their web page today, and I was just like, holy cow. I mean, I like my Griffin Vice, but those things are just on another plane. I mean, they sell extra weights for them so they spin faster. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I was looking at that. 
if you do a lot of rotary tying, that's the way to go. Oh, yeah. You could become a production tire like Adam with a little Trails Fly Shop with that. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah, we've got to make get your logo on here, Adam. We've got to do that for sure. Yeah, man. I'll have to get it to you. So, you know, um, and both you guys do tie production, which is interesting because, Adam, you've got your fly shop that you've just sort of had as a hobby shop for a long time. And then, Nick, yep. you're selling flies through the website. I give flies to my friends. I don't really sell anything. Um, what, unless somebody calls me and they're like, I want some of these and I'm like, well, I've got to buy the stuff. So here you go. Um, but what is it like, uh, I guess Adam go first, since you're sort of the, the hobbyist guy, not making a living off of this. What's mm-hmm. it like to tie production? Um, I mean, everything that I do, I mean, I run mine through an Etsy shop, so it's pretty small scale stuff. Everything's made to order which is kind of cool so i don't have an inventory necessarily of flies already tied up unless it's my own uh my own fly box that's ready to rock and roll um so everything that i do is it's it's made to order so i try to make mine as simple as i can in terms of you don't have to order a specific number um i'll sell them in 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 groups so which will make them cheaper for you if you ever want to but um each one, I, I leave it. I leave the uh, the options open if you want a specific color. So if you want, like, like Moorish hoppers are on there, for instance. I have all sorts of different foam patterns that I can and colors that I can use depending upon whatever you want. So um, for me, to your point, I mean, it, it's truly just a hobby. And you know, if I can tie some cool flies and sell them to people, and they get them out and fish them in a different water and let me know how it works, I think that's awesome. I just enjoy tying in general, um, and that gives me the ability to continue doing it not just for myself or for a few buddies but um uh time for different people depending upon the waters that they're fishing so um that's that's really what it is for me man uh, totally different than i'm sure what what nick goes through i mean everything nick for you on on your um fly shop is are you tying all that yourself and selling those particular flies how does that work no he was yeah, now I... he's gonna hire you <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I tie everything. Uh, here's my thumb from today's run of dungeons. So yeah, um, I uh, I broke into this actually selling, telling, tying and selling crappie jigs is what I got started on. I used to tie and sell crappie jigs, and then that moved into selling flies, and then that moved into the plethora of totes of materials behind me here. Um, so now as I'm kind of trying to transition myself into making this my career and stepping off the ambulance a little bit. I've got back into production fly tying and it's taken off. I've had people asking me to tie flies for a couple of years and I kind of, I was so busy with these materials and trying to figure this out. I kind of shunned away from it, but we're, I think I'm 200 flies behind right now. So it's going to be a long week. So that's, that's funny for me because I don't, I'm not doing them in that, that amount of order, but I'll get, for instance, I had an order come through over the weekend and I'm missing the one material for it. It's like, gosh, I have to go to the store, spend eight, fifteen bucks on the one material that I need for an eight dollar fly order. Like, <laughs> or you certainly can certainly not order it. not making money on. You it. can order it and save fifteen percent. That's true. See, yeah. I gotta work smarter, not harder. There you go. Guys. Exactly. I just steal from myself all the time when I need something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. That's gotta be like the. I mean, I, I'm not being rude or anything, but that's literally like getting high off your own supply. You know, right. <laughs> if you've yeah. got access. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> if you've got access to all the materials, you're like, oh, I'll just take one here and I'll just take one there. Next thing you know, you're getting beat up for being short. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's it's really like- hard when writing stuff comes in and I have to put it on the shelf instead of put it in my own box. It's heartbreaking. <laughs> it's not like you can just mix it with baby laxative and make it go further. <laughs> right. <laughs> I can find a way to cut the feathers. I'm going to do it. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Just you pluck out every other one. Stuff has to bag with right. feathers or something. Oh. But, you know, that is that is really a, a fun aspect of it is being able to see all of those new products and those things that come in. What has been something that has just blown you away where, you know, you're like, this is something that every fly tire needs whether it's a tool or a material what have you seen that you just think is is the go-to uh probably that nano silk that i got you started on i 
don't I, whenever I tie with anything else now I just snap the thread because I'm so used to torque and everything with that. That stuff has completely changed the way I tie flies. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's tough. Does it dull scissors? Because my scissors are dull. Um, they say it does. Okay. He's just looking. Sean's just looking for it. I only use buy something uh, else. like the V of the feather and cut it right there. I don't use the tips of mine to cut my nano silk. Yeah. Well, I wish I would have known that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've I'll got tell you some scissors, scissors and then I'll tell you how about that. Yeah. Yeah. I've got scissors, but yeah, that nano silk is just—it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And have you tied with it, Adam? No, I haven't. But you know, I will say, um, you know, talk about. Um, breaking your thread off the game changer for me with that in and of itself was changing my bobbin so going to right bobbin uh phenomenal i mean i feel like i can torque on those things and i i couldn't tell you the last time i snapped off a, a thread that just made all the difference in the world and you're using the uh the ceramic bobbin the ceramic tip yeah. right yeah 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 that big play in it yeah are you selling right bobbins yet because we can give you justin's phone number Yeah, I've got them. I, yeah. That's what I tie with. I use a right shorty bobbin for everything, except for the nano silk. Don't if you get some of that, don't run that through a ceramic bobbin, or you're going to put a groove in it and ruin it. I did oh, that with my first around, right. Yeah. So yeah, but the uh, what is it? The yeah. half hitch that doesn't have the ceramic Our mistake. Yeah, I've got my nano mm -hmm. silk in the my big half magnet. hitch. Yeah, because it doesn't have ceramic. I've got it in there, and I love it. I was running it through my loon that doesn't have ceramic, and. Uh, the Loon products are great, don't get me wrong, but the Loon tools, buy the pack and just use the bobbin for extra stuff because of the right bobbins, in my opinion. And, and not just because he's been on the show. Those are the bobbins I used before I ever picked up any Loon stuff. So, you know, yeah. habit. Oh, that's great stuff. Yeah, those are the only ones I found that fit my fat hands and fat fingers good. I, mm -hmm. All the <laughs> other ones are either too long or too short, but that right shorty just fits me perfect. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's great. I don't know if you know the story with him or not, um, but he actually has folks in a sheltered workshop help assemble those for him. So they actually make money off of it. Um, so they're all assembled there. And he, he, you know, pays them really well compared to what they would be paying, you know, otherwise. And I think he keeps two of them open um, where these folks have the ability to have a job and have a little bit of money of their own and stuff like that. Really great guy. Um, yeah. If you want to, you can go back That's and listen awesome. to the podcast. He was he was awesome. We need to get him back on here sometime. Um, but talking about you know the fly shop, that's I know you got into it and it was you know it was a slow thing with tying crappie jigs and I think a lot of us probably started tying jigs like that. What do you say to somebody? I know what I say to somebody when they say they're a beginner fly tier. You know, I'm like, well, go look for a used device, but get a quality vice. You know, make sure you spend the money and buy one good bobbin. You know, buy some tools that are decent. You don't need to go out and buy. I know Dr. Slick is really popular, but really expensive. I'm like, just go buy a base set of like loon tools or something that are still quality, but they're not going to break the bank, you know, and, and start tying these simpler flies. What do you recommend for somebody? If somebody came up to you and just said, I'm brand new, what do I need to get? So what I usually do, first of all, I tell them not to buy those pre-made kits because you're going to get so much stuff you're never going to use in there. Um, we do it a lot. I get a lot of new guys that come to me, I think because we're a little bit more approachable than going into a typical fly shop. They can just message me over the Internet. Um, I usually set them up with whatever the best vice, scissors, and bobbin they can afford is. Right. And then we pick out three fly patterns, and I get them all the materials for just those three fly patterns. Then once they get those mastered, they come back to me and we do two or three more patterns and kind of snowball to get them rolling. Yeah. I think that's just absolutely the best way I know. First thing I learned to tie was a woolly bugger. And yeah. it's like you're going to tie woolly buggers until you can tie the perfect woolly bugger every time, you know. And that takes a lot. I know, Adam, I bought some Copper Johns from you and they were absolutely amazing. You know. Oh, thanks. I mean, and yeah. that's a fly that you tie a lot of, but repetition is key. Yeah, that's exactly yeah, it. For sure. I've got a buddy. Um, he just retired and uh, he will go trout fishing a couple times a year and he's a power bait fisherman. So he and I like to give each other grief during our trips. Um, and uh, he, he retired. He's like, all right, I've got time. I'm going to get into this whole fly tying thing. And he signed up for a fly tying um, 
class here at one of the local fly shops, K and K, uh, over in Overland Park. And so he's been taking their class, you know, got advice, and he's like, "All right." His ten-year-old grandson, um, he's like, he's into it. He's ready to go. He's so he's hooking, setting him all up, and he's tying a few flies now. So I'm like, okay, next time we go on this trip, I don't expect any power bait. So hopefully <laughs> we've got, got him converted. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know the the fun thing is, and I know we've got people from all walks of life that listen to this, but you can t- people don't realize you can tie lures. Oh, for sure. I mean, I've yeah. got. Uh, Big Brian gets into my fly box every time. And I tied up some, uh, I used the gator tails from, uh, I think it's gator tail or dragon. I don't remember which one he calls them, but I, the yeah. tails. Yeah. Put a big old heavy weight on the front end of it and some dubbing. And you just dip that in floatant. And man, you've got a, looks like a net rig, you right. know, and right. you can cast those things on a regular rod and reel. And I don't think people understand, you know, like we talk about tying crappie jigs, but you can tie all sorts of things. You know, you can use rubber skirts and tie on for spinners and you can buy spinners separate. But even if you're not a fly fisherman, don't let that stop you from using that creativity and getting into this hobby. I know I personally, I fish maybe, and I know Adam, you're like me. I fish maybe five patterns a year. Mm-hmm but you wouldn't know it by looking at my fly boxes. Exactly. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. My, I had an uncle, um, you know, when I was growing up, he is a big bass fisherman and, um, just traditional spin fishing and bait caster and whatnot. And he had a setup in his garage. And at the time I didn't really fully understand it. I was four or five years old, but we'd go over there and he'd have his garage all set up. And, um, he made, custom uh spinner baits and um uh, uh like jerk baits mm-hmm. and uh it's like i that was weird to me then thinking about it, i'm like you buy those at the store i don't understand why you're making that and then now of course being older i'm like of course that's what you do why wouldn't you do it any other mm-hmm. way you're right i mean it's it's really a difference in size of material and sometimes the type of material it's all about the weight and depending upon how you're going to throw it but yeah. ultimately it's the same art yeah. Um, in the same breath, right? Yeah. And, you know, you're not going to save any money. I mean, I, I told my wife, oh, I'm going to save so much money tying flies. But you know what I do save? I do save money because I don't go to the bar. <laughs> I you're mean, just putting the money somewhere else, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> instead of going to the bar, I'm just going to give Nick $62 a week every week. Um, <laughs> I, I just, you know, that's a lie. I just turned my paycheck. It's My paycheck is now direct deposited into Nick yeah. Dooley in order for me to save Direct up enough deposit. to get it. Yeah. <laughs> Just for me to get a Norvice. Um, <laughs> he gives yeah, me 1% we'll interest. There someday. He, he's better than the bank. He has given me interest on my money. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I. it's like uh, Jeff Tatum from 19 Delta Bates does plastics. Well, hell, you're not going to make a – you're not going to save a dime by the time you get into all that. No. You know, but no. for him – to mass produce those and sell them, you're sure going to save money buying them from him, yeah. you know? And that's, that's the interesting thing is, you know, if you're not wanting to tie flies, having somebody like Nick or Adam tie them for you, you're going to get away a lot better, most likely, because yeah. if you're just looking to save money, that, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's not going to happen. No, no, not at all. Not at all. But it sure is a fun hobby to have. Oh man. Yeah. I'm thankful that I found it. Honestly, I mean, that's, that's what brought me back into fishing in general was deciding to pick up, um, uh, tying. I I had never fly fished before, let alone tied. And I just on a whim decided to give it a go. And it just reignited my passion for fishing. Cause I mean, I grew up just traditional fishing. My dad doesn't fly fish. He's, um, typically buzz baits, spinner baits and worm fishing is what we grew up doing. And, uh, uh, that kind of got old after a while. So then, you know, an adult and finding, needing something else to do, man, this just turned into something great for me. I'm, I'm thankful for it. Really. It's been, it's been awesome. And Nick, I know you fish a lot and, uh, you've got a couple of places that you really like to go. And I know one of them's on my list of places to try and hit this summer. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about Iowa? Yeah. So, uh, I fish a lot in here in Illinois. I fish up in Iowa this year. Um, I got some plans to go up to the Driftless area, which I've never been to before, but I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Uh, I'm driven by there a lot at work. I work as a paramedic in Iowa, and we take transfers up that way. But um, 
I'm actually going to have some time to do things this year since I'm not working my tail in the dirt anymore. So they don't let you just kind pull of the excited ambulance to get to the over and, and fish for a little while with the guy. <laughs> yeah, in I'm going to wet a line. Yeah, Three that's kind of frowned upon. <laughs> <laughs> He's stable. Pull over. Hold your breath. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> it's been tempting. <laughs> see a hatch out there and you're like oh it's really tempting during deer season too <laughs> i, I bet, bet yeah mm-hmm. yeah the driftless region you can make man, it that's <laughs> that's on my that's on my list to get to eventually I, i've heard nothing but great things um a little i wouldn't say i mean it's kind of under the radar right i mean like people around the midwest have heard of it know mm-hmm. of it but it's not necessarily marketed as uh, a, a target place to go for trout fishing but it's it's supposed to be awesome yeah i've i've heard nothing but great things about gym. it the guy that i'm going with says you can catch all three species there so yeah Man. That, that's yeah. the big one that's the big that's one. cool and then you come to montauk in missouri quite a bit um we're gonna have to get you out on that blue ribbon yeah. trout take a family trip down there. yeah we're gonna have to get you out on that a couple times because if you go to, to montauk bad. you're within driving distance like three of those rivers and it works out really well. Yeah. Yeah, we have a 32-foot camper. We drag down there and stay for four or five days at a time with the kids all the time. So Leave yeah. the kids at home and Adam and I will, will be there. <laughs> <laughs> You'll you think... tell them that. You tell them I'm leaving with fishing poles with Adam and see what happens. <laughs> right. You'll think you have two children once Adam and I show up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Adam, you take your kids fishing a lot, too. I don't have to tie your guys' lures on and take your fish off. <laughs> you got to take my fish off. I don't touch them. <laughs> I don't want to hurt I don't want to hurt the fish. I just stand there and slam them on the ground until the hook falls out of their mouth. Yeah. Just... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, that's great. My, yeah, my... no, I... Oh, go ahead. I, I can't keep my youngest one off the scope when we go down there. That's all he wants to catch. Right. Yeah. I've got before we. I go down to Bennett all the time because it's what's closest to me for trout fishing. I like to take the kids. They're all old enough now. My youngest is five, so like everybody's old enough to kind of, kind of figure it out. And uh, but my oldest, who's eleven, almost twelve now, but she and I've been going for a couple of years. I took her down there to go trout fishing and. I think I would turn around me was tying on another fly or something. And I look over, she's got the net and she's just looking at all the trout swimming down around her feet. She's like, I'm, I'm going to get one. I'll just be use the net. I'll forget this is fly fishing. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't work like that. You can't do that. Although that would be great. <laughs> My dad took me fishing one time. Yeah, they don't understand. He took, he took me one time and he had some hot dogs he was using as bait and they were old, nasty, gross hot dogs. And I was like three and he turned around and I had that hot dog in my mouth, just eating it like it was good. That was the last time my dad oh, took yeah. After that, we went shooting handguns and squirrel hunting and whatnot. I ate that bait and I loved it. And he's like, no, nah. so. <laughs> you know, it's interesting if you take your kids fishing, because like my oldest daughter, she only fly fishes now. You know, she's 16. She only fly fishes. My son, he spin fishes. Uh, he doesn't have a desire to fly fish yet, which is fine. But it's it's neat to take them out there. And when it's not frozen over and February 1st starts, you can actually take them to the trout pond and catch trout and fix them for them for dinner. You know, they love crappie yeah. fishing. Catch crappie and, you know, come home and I'll clean a couple of crappie and we'll pan fry them and man that's just a, a treat for them and it's like man i grew up having to shoot squirrels for dinner <laughs> you know yeah for them mm-hmm. it's luxury you know that's great yeah come a come a long way sean yeah. come a long way yes you can take the boy out of the trailer but you can't take the trailer out the boy <laughs> <laughs> oh so what else is new and exciting over in dooleyflyfishing.com land? You've got a couple other things going on with the boxes. I know we listed off what they were, but do you want to go ahead and just drop the different boxes and what people can expect in them? Yeah. So we started with just the basic and advanced as kind of a test run. Um, I've had a lot of requests from people saying, you know, I don't trout fish or I only warm water fish or only salt water fish so we've added uh, a warm water box which is going to be bass or bluegill flies uh, this month that's a pretty cool uh, craft for bait fish with a fish skull mask on it 
Um, and then the salt box, I've never fished in salt water, but it's I like to tie salt water flies and I sell a lot of them. Um, it's kind of a mismatch of all different bonefish patterns put together. It's a pretty cool looking fly. So yeah, it looks a lot. Uh, like and then we also fish. added a flies box for those people who don't. Okay. Yeah, it's it's like a cross between a redfish crack and a gotcha. Yeah, mm -hmm. it looks great. Mm -hmm. And, and then, then we've the... got the uh, flies box for people who don't tie flies. That put a dozen or so flies in a box for them to have. Right, and uh, and that's that, and I'm I'm not okay. Nobody gives me money, you know what I mean, for flies. So I can say this in all honesty. I mm -hmm. for Christmas a couple of years ago, before I guess it was before I knew Adam, I bought some trout flies from one of these bigger companies. And they came in, and for the most part, they looked all right. But they really looked like they were factory tied. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to politely say this, so I'm just going to Sean say it. I know there are a lot of guys in third world countries that are tying flies. And cranking yeah. out just as many as they can. And oh, yeah. and I, I, a lot of times, you know, you sit there and you wonder, well, they need a job but their working conditions are probably horrible. You know what I mean? It's sort of like yeah. the the shoe the tennis shoe dilemma. You know? Right, right. <laughs> when the major company's paying out a dollar to the people uh -huh. that make these and you're yeah, charging yeah. 120 bucks, you know, are you going to support that company or not? And I just would prefer like when I know I need some copper johns that are way too small for me to tie, I can just call Adam and I can say, "Hey, I'm giving a dozen copper johns to three of my buddies for Christmas, can you whip three dozen up for me?" And he's like, "Yeah, I'll get them in the mail to you." You know, that's great. And and you've got the same thing where I know that it's going to be quality. I know they're all going to look alike. You know, it's not going to be like there's a really odd one just tossed in there. And I think that's a much mm -hmm. better deal, not only for the quality of the fly, but I think it's a better deal for the buyer's mojo and their own personal, you know, karma, if that helps. So have you oh, yeah, I'm with you. I don't know about you guys, but my uh, inbox on Facebook is full of the Kenyan guys. Just they blow me up every day. Blocking them constantly. I, I yeah. did a podcast and I mean, it wasn't 10. Yeah, minutes. that's all I do. I dropped the podcast and like 10 minutes later, boom, you know, I'm just getting flooded with them. Yeah. And like I said, ethically, I don't know. I don't know which is ethically better. But it sure bothers me to think that this poor guy is sitting here tying these flies for 10 cents an hour, you yeah. know, and yeah. he's, you know, just, yeah. just working away. But I do like when I know I can call Adam or I can call you and I can say, hey, I need some Copper Johns, but I want them in blue. And I can send you a text message. And that's mm -hmm. one thing, both of you, Nick and Adam, you're both extremely easy to contact. And that's a really big deal in today's day and age. Yeah, you got to be punctual, right? Uh, otherwise, people are just going to move right along. Yeah, mm -hmm. I called. Uh, I called my local fly shop, which is you know, uh, hundred miles, hundred miles away. I called my local fly shop and I said, uh, I don't know exactly what I need, and they're like, Well, did you look at our catalog online? <laughs> Again, I don't know exactly what I need because I've never tied this before, and I want to make sure I don't order. You know. I got some stuff. I wound up having to order some other stuff because the person I talked to was just a uh, person who worked there that was not in the tying industry. But I call Nick and I'm like, you know, or I text Nick or, or, or email him, Facebook message him, and I'm like, hey, I'm trying to make this. And he's like, oh, you want it a size 16? And I'm like, oh, no, let's try a 14 first. And he's like, oh, okay. And then he just puts it together for me. And then I've got – Okay, I'm going to try this fly. I'm going to tie up a half dozen, a do or excuse me, a dozen or two dozen of these trout flies that I've never tied before, yeah. and it works great. I love it, and that personal response is something there, you know. Yeah. What? I'm I'm curious, um, Nick, with these different the fly medic kits that you're doing, uh, are you are you just constantly wanting mm -hmm. to try? I guess different patterns or allow people to try, I guess, different patterns. Do you have kind of an end game or 
specific fly boxes that you know you want to put together based on demand or are you gonna you think you might just cap it before it gets too out of control and you got to be able to control how much you how much input you have or what does yeah. that look like because it's a great concept i th i think right now with, with the four different fly boxes that's kind of a lot to handle especially when you don't know exactly how many orders you're going to get um last month we did that game changer box and had three times the amount of orders I was expecting. So from the 20th to the 25th, I was scrambling trying to get stuff in. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think we're probably going to end up adding a predator box and that's probably going to be the end of it. Cause there's a lot of guys that I have around here and North of here. That's all they fly fish for is muskie and pike. So, yeah. um, I think that's kind of on the horizon. Once I get more comfortable myself and tying them, I just kind of broke into that game this year. Um, but I've got a big master list for each of these boxes for at least the next year that I've got them all planned out what we're going to have. So cool. I know yeah. Adam and but I, I'm always open to suggestions. Yeah. If anybody wants a box, I may email me. Yeah. That's what I say. I know Adam and I can sit down and make a material list of flies that are unique to our area. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know I've got some flies that I've never seen anybody mm -hmm. else tie, you know, that was outside of the Ozarks of Missouri for smallmouth bass. Um, they look more like they look like a lure i mean it's literally you know you've got to throw it on a six weight unless you're really confident with a four weight but you're not throwing it on a two weight you know yeah. it, it throws best on an eight weight um mm -hmm. but some of these flies are and you can modify a lot of them and make some different things up but i've never seen these in magazines catalogs or stores and the fly tires dungeon bait fish i mean that's a beautiful fly and you know you can whip out two dozen of those in no time and they catch fish but they catch fish at certain times game changers any type of game changer those are great and mm -hmm. congo hair is great for tying game changers um i'm just constantly amazed at at the ftd stuff but we all i mean you hear that every week from me so it's not a big deal but man um that's one of my goals is to start doing more tying videos of their stuff and river road creations and i know i talked to tony after you and i talked but river road creations is something you're having a hard time keeping in stock isn't it nick mm -hmm. oh yeah it's really really hard to get it's starting to come around a little bit now but the fall last year i couldn't get anything i just pretty much put them all out of stock on the website and put them in a special order because you just couldn't get them yeah. yeah and i don't know if adam you and i talked about this but i called tony and he was like, man, he goes, they shut me down. I couldn't have my employees. He goes, so I'm running the entire shop. And we had talked about the razor company that he'd worked with. So he's got those yeah. machines now to do everything in house. Yeah. They shut him down and then everybody's at home tying flies. So his orders for his main distributor doubled. Yeah. You know, and here he is working and he's not a young guy. Right. He's got yeah. a son your age. You know what I mean? And he's busting his hind in out there and can't sell pretty much except for his website and a one distributor. And people are just going nuts for his product. And he's like, I don't know if I should laugh or cry. You know, he yeah. goes, it's an excellent place to be in. But, you know, people are eventually going to go back to work. You know, and what do you do then? And those cutters are so durable and last so long. You know, it's sort of like cutthroat leaders. They last so long or a stonefly net they la or a bajo bajuco rod. It's not like you've got a ton of repeat business mm -hmm. every two or three weeks. It's not like you're buying rubber legs or dubbing and you've got to resupply it, you know. Yeah. And yeah. I know, Nick, you talked to cutthroat, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I got, he's sending me some samples and a price catalog so we can get that stuff in here. He good seems deal. like a good guy to work with. And you talked to Arc Flyline yet? I have not done that one yet. I've been so slammed with everything. I've I've got a lot of calls I got to get made. Yeah. Well, I know Arc Flyline and Adam, you, you know the guy from Arc too. That's a great fly line that is really yeah. underrepresented. And uh, Travis, I, I reached out to Travis. This, you know, I, I like to make these facts. Adam and I don't do anything. We have, like, no skills whatsoever, but we know everybody. <laughs> you know? 
And Adam can pick up the phone. I say, hey, we need a guest for Monday night. Adam picks up the phone, and he's got four of them lined up. He's like, which one do you want to have? I mean, he is he is like the glue that holds this show together. And you guys, will, now that he's back, you guys will notice a lot more quality and guests that we have. Um, and I just, I really appreciate that, Adam. But, yeah, Nick, I mean, you've got, you're killing it over there. Yeah, it's been awesome. Uh, we were talking about that River Roads for a second. We do okay. have something else on the horizon with uh, foam-bodied stuff that we're trying to do in-house here. Uh, I'll leave it at that because I think it's going to be something that's never been done before. So um, probably in the next two or three days, you'll see something on our website of some of these ideas we've got going for cutting our own foam patterns. So oh, that's that'll sweet. be exciting. Yeah, I, that's awesome. I sold all my River Road creation yeah, supplies after awesome. Adam beat me at the – grudge match two times in a row <laughs> man I, i'll tell you that that stuff and if you have something that's um you know similar nick if that's what you're talking about getting into having those pre-cut or the ability to pre-cut those particular designs based on the the type of fly that you want to tie man it just makes it it makes it easy and they turn out at least what i've done in the past they're beautiful flies and beautiful patterns and Stuff that you don't normally see necessarily for somebody else. You, you see a lot of hopper patterns or, you know, chubby Chernobyls or whatnot. And they all have their own takes on them based on material. But you use those cutters. Mm-hmm. You do something like the Moorish hopper. Like, it's uniquely itself, which is what I really like about it. So, I like – I have, we had a little group of guys that would get together once in a while. And there was this guy that drove down from up north. He drove like an hour to come to see us. And I'm like, dude, you're on crack. Um <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna drive an hour go to st louis and he would, <laughs> he would come down here and he's like oh i cut this all out by hand and it's a beautiful hopper i'm like how long did that take about 45 minutes and i'm like dude for 45 bucks you could have bought a cutter a whole hopper cutter you know with the wing and the body and the legs and you know the whole nine yards and you could crank those bad boys out in about six minutes a pop Yep. You know, yep. and it's it's amazing how some people don't want to spend money, but they'll spend time. And some people like me, I don't want to spend the time. Mm-hmm. I want to spend the money and I want to make flies that when my fly box comes open, if my buddies go, I like that, I'm going to take it. I'm not sitting there going, dude, that was an hour. You right. Know? Yeah. I Everybody has a different price for that, for sure. Yeah. I think that's a big difference. But like, you know, most of us, if you're not buying the full box, I mean, they're really inexpensive considering what Mm -hmm. your time's worth i mean you know you can work an hour and a half at mcdonald's and buy you know two cutters nowadays yeah yeah nick that's exciting man i'm gonna keep an eye out for that that's cool yeah we've got two or three patterns already the real simple ones that this is worked on so we're gonna try some of the more intricate stuff in the next couple days and if it works i think we're gonna have a whole line of foam come out that's and it's gonna be ridiculously cheap you're not even going to believe the price of it when you sell it so awesome that's what i like to hear it's exciting ridiculously cheap bring it oh yeah bring it on. yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah and you're you're gonna handle uh we've got a prototype i'm not going to discuss uh we've got a prototype made uh the first half of it's made um with the kayak flyer logo um but you're gonna when those come out you're gonna exclusively sell those for us nick and that's really exciting so Nick is yeah the, I'm excited for those too yeah Nick is the official kayak flyer right he's the official fly shop for kayak flyer if we ever get a website <laughs> you're the only you're the, gonna be the only link for a fly shop we have yeah you know just go here just don't go anywhere else use well, promo I appreciate code, that yeah use promo code kayak to save 15 percent guys you're stupid if you don't do it and I mean because it is it is great you know. Absolutely great. And if you're thinking about one of those cutthroat leaders, hey, guys, I'll tell you what. You know what? Uh, Nick, let's do this. Anybody who uses a promo code kayak, you can keep track of, right? Is that, yeah. That's a possibility. So let's say um, this drops uh, the 15th. So let's say that anybody who uses promo code okay. between the 15th and March 1st, you do a random number generator, and I will mail them a free cutthroat leader. How's that? That's a great idea. Yeah. That's, that's a, I think Perfect. that's I a winner. That. 
You know, that way you, you're already shopping at a place where you can buy them. Get one for free before you buy it and try it, guys. That's that's how nice I am. I'm going to mail out a free I'll cut throw a later. $15 gift card on there, too. Oh, wow. Look at you. Man. Ooh, boy. Damn, that's a $35 yeah, value right there. Here we go. Hey, We're Adam, just buying our listens now. I'm in for this. I'm telling you, Adam, I am literally right now <laughs> placing my order just so I can win. <laughs> <laughs> Save some money on the postage. I'm going to accidentally yes, exclude right all of your orders. <laughs> you can't exclude my orders. You get my paycheck direct deposited <laughs> into your account. The way the postal service is going, don't ship it to yourself. It'll take two months to get there. Oh, my. This is weird. I shipped Adam's stuff on Saturday and he got it on Monday. Yeah. You ship me something on Tuesday it's and crazy, it gets here Adam. the next it, Monday. Adam's like, I got your package, and I'm like, yeah, you're. I shipped now. something 20 miles east of me, and it took him six days to get it there to go 20 miles east of me. I, I don't get it. Yeah, I, but then I, I get stuff from Canada in two or three days. I, it makes no sense. Yeah, the damn Pony Express was faster than this. Hey, Canadians got to figure it out, bro. We got to get on that. <laughs> what I'm working. Hey, we're gonna get yeah, that. They do. That lazy yeah. R guy, he seems pretty funny, and he's Canadian. We're going to have to get him on the podcast. Do you follow him on Facebook, Nick? Uh, who is it? It's Lazy R or something. He's a friggin' hoot. Like, lazy R streamers, yeah, I think. Yeah, Lazy R streamers. Yeah, I think I got him on there. Oh, my God, he's funny as all get out. Yeah. I think I he just lives on online. I love him to death because you post something, like you reply to him, and he, like, fires right back. He's yeah. hilarious. But – uh. That's kind of, but they do, there, there's this thing, there's this, uh, they use these glass beads. I guess they're salmon fishing. I don't, I don't know why you would use a glass mm -hmm. bead. It doesn't register with me. Do you it guys depends know? On your, it depends on your setup. I mean, I've seen all sorts of crazy setups. I mean, are they are they fly fishing or? Yeah, or... it looks like they're fly fishing. And they're these big glass beads that look like they're all speckled and whatnot. And I, I, I guess they're salmon fishing with them. I don't know. Interesting. He was all... egg. Yeah, I think they use them for egg replicas. Is that what they're doing? But I, I, I would never. Yeah. I yeah, would... I think so. I've seen some of those before. I would never fish an egg pattern or a mop fly. No. Or not squirmy one wormy. You, yeah. Not, me. not one not one you tied, right? You, no. You, no. you purist. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what, if it if I'll it, run a double rig with a mop fly and an egg fly at the same thing. I have never used my six weight with a worm hook and a soft plastic scented bait. I'm just saying that right now. I've never done that. <laughs> but when the fish aren't biting, you go. They make the great girl. cane bolts. <laughs> <laughs> that's Tenkara. That's Tenkara. <laughs> yeah, Tenkara. Put your pinky up when you cast it. You're good. Oh, I'm telling you. What. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh, that's too good. <laughs> Adam's a Tenkara fisherman. You better be nice. I'm, I'm oh, never I better Tenkara delete fish that off the life. video, huh? <laughs> Hey, I got nothing against it, but that is not something I've ever done. We're gonna, we're gonna put up. We're gonna. I'm gonna drive all the way out, six hours just to put a I Heart Tenkara bumper sticker on the back of Adam's car. <laughs> I've never tried. I don't have anything against it. I've never. Tried I don't know it. if you've ever seen that movie where Will Ferrell. Go ahead. Will Ferrell's like a ribbon dancer or something. Oh, Every time I think about Tinkara, that's what I think about is that clip of him yeah. dancing around with that ribbon. It's <laughs> in old, old school. Old school. Yeah. 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 What happened? Yeah, what out? yeah. I have never I've I've never seen anybody at Tinkara. <laughs> I've never seen a Tinkara rod. We had a Tinkara guy on the podcast. It seemed neat. It seemed simple. Yeah. yeah. And then what is this thing called pinning? Is this a salmon thing where people are pin fishing? A single pinning? I'm on this one I've Facebook group, and every joke is about people that are pinning. And I'm like, I have no idea what this is. It's got to be a no. salmon thing. Yeah, that's over my head. I have no clue. It's like free spooling or something, and they like they float them down like a hundred yards, and like till they're into their backing. I don't get. It. I don't know. If you know that, that send sounds us a, like a terrible fight. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. If you know this, send us an email: kayakflyerpodcast at gmail.com. Help us figure out what we should be making fun of.
Yeah, or, let us learn something. Yeah. yeah. Or why we shouldn't be making fun of it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Educate ourselves to to be better people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the sad thing is you, you don't even realize what you're supposed to be making fun of anymore. You know. Yeah. Oh, oh man. So upcoming trips, it's mid-February. I am headed to uh, the great state of Tennessee. Hope to get a little bit of fishing in down there. It's going to be 20 degrees warmer than here. Unfortunately, it's only going to be 9 here, so it'll be 29 there. Right. So fishing may suck, um, unless I find a trout stream. <laughs> Adam, you got anything planned for, I know March 1st is right around the corner. Anything coming up? Yeah, I mean March first, you got opening day, but I you won't catch me there. I won't be doing that. That's not uh, not on my list of to dos. Um, you know, man, I don't have anything specific on the books. Um, kind of like Nick with my family and kids, we've got a camper, so I'm sure we'll find some trips to do throughout the course of the summer. But nothing set in stone yet. But um, you know, I'd like I'm still itching to get back down to Texas and Rich at Galveston on the fly. He's out there outside of. Um, um galveston the houston area i'd love to get down there if i can but it's just uh it's just too unpredictable right now just to to know if that's the safe thing to do but uh it's on my list for sure of what i'd like but we'll probably keep it keep it close the driftless region nick you got to keep us posted man if you get up there i want to know all about it yeah we could actually meet it would take us the yeah, same amount of sure. time to drive adam and then get together and go the rest of the way up that'd be cool yeah, you know, I would love could, that. That would be a we could have a kayak fly, flyer rendezvous there. Yeah, we could have like, all the fans show up. Yeah, everybody would. You, Brian would be it. Like, oh. and it's because he's riding with you. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> right, and then bitching about me not stopping enough for snacks. <laughs> God love Brian. So, the other, day, you know, that day we went out, and we met you. Dude, three yeah. weeks later, I was still finding candy wrappers in my truck. He was, like, <laughs> stashing them in places, like, just to aggravate me. I'm like, what the? Another damn candy wrapper. That's great. I know. Oh, man. That's funny. That nuts. Yeah. What about you, uh, Nick? I know the Driftless region. Anything you're really <laughs> thinking about hitting? I know you're probably going to come to Missouri with uh, our friend Ben. Yeah, we're talking about that. Uh in the March, early April is when I do all my crappie fishing on the fly. That's about my favorite thing to do. Um, cool. Catch 30 or 40 fish a day. Fly fishing is pretty awesome. So yeah, I look that. forward to that every year. I'm going to tell you this. I've got one lake. It's easy to get to. It's not far from work. I get off school, take my kayak, go right over there. And every crappie's a little bit bigger than my hand. And people are constantly throwing back these little crappie. Mm -hmm. And they're keeping maybe eight big crappie a day, as opposed to the 30 a day is the limit. And I just made up my mind, I'm keeping 30. If I catch 30, I'm keeping 30. Because yeah. that lake yeah. is not big enough for the number of crappie in it. Have you guys run into that at all? In a lake where you're just, you want to fish it and it's, it's good fishing, but the fish just aren't of any right. size? I mean, from at like a yeah, I got a bluegill lake like that that's just completely overrun. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I I haven't done a whole lot of lake fishing, but um, you know, smaller ponds around this these areas, the you know, largemouth aren't aren't any bigger than six or eight inches, and that's that's just average. And bluegill everywhere, yeah. so but uh, that's a little bit different. I've got one friend that if you keep anything below, if if you Excuse me, if you turn back anything below 15 inches on bass, you're not allowed to come back. No kidding. And he has a table set up with an electric fillet knife. And basically you bring up, you use one of those big baskets because a stringer isn't going to work. Use one of those big yeah. baskets with a lid and you just bring them up and he's more than happy. If you get a hold of him ahead of time, he's like... I will cook. I've got bass in the freezer. I will take your bass and clean them all and put them back in to restock the freezer. And you come down here, and, man, you talk about farm ponds with those Moorish hoppers from River yeah. Road Creations. Yeah. Boom. In the midsummer and fall, you're pulling out. You're pulling out fish faster. And they're overstocked. And sometimes they got white spots on them from low oxygen, oxygen mm -hmm. during that time of year. 
man, yeah. it's great to get those fish out of there. And they don't taste great, but man, you put enough, you know, red hot sauce on anything, enough Franks will, will work it over. <laughs> you know, batter yeah. them bad boys up, fry them, throw in a couple of squirrels, maybe a raccoon that you picked up on the road. You got a feast, buddy. I'm yeah. telling you what, you got a That's Boinder the Gerardo County special. special, bro. The Missouri buffet. <laughs> so, well, guys, uh, you know how to win your free leader. Um, you know how to save 15% with Nick. You know if you are entered in that free leader, you're entered to win that $15. So you'll get a leader and $15, $35 value right there, guys. You save anytime you go to Nick Dooley, Dooley's fly fishing.com. You guys are going to save. Um, Adam, uh, Latrell Fly Fishing on Etsy. And uh, we got to get your logo. I'm going to try and pop that in here after the show when I edit it all down. If you're listening on the podcast, guys, we are really in a state of flux, and I really need your feedback. Um, we used to live stream, but we had guys like Pablo who couldn't be on. But then we had an episode like last week where Pablo just didn't sound good. And the restrictions of doing the video and the video calls versus just doing audio, we're really trying to figure out, do we have that many listeners that are just video? Comment on YouTube or on Facebook where you listen to the podcast and what you want more of. Are you an audio only guy? Are you a video guy? We don't want to alienate anybody, but we're really wanting to streamline things down to make them a little bit better. And that's the all the housekeeping I've got. Adam, you got anything for housekeeping? You want to plug your store a little bit and tell somebody how they can get those killer Copper Johns? Yeah, man. If you want, you just go to Etsy.com and uh, look for Latrell's Fly Shop. We're out there. Um, got a selection of flies you can choose from. If there's anything particular that you want, like to Sean's point, if you want some Copper Johns, if you don't find them on there, just let me know. We custom tie everything. Um, happy to do it in whatever color or size that you need. Um, no, yeah, that's it. So I don't really have anything else. It's great to be on with you guys. So I'll, I'll throw it back to you, buddy. All right, Nick, uh, last words for people that are thinking about getting into fly tying or maybe they fly tied for a long time, but they're just tired of going to the fly shop and looking for patterns. Yeah, just give us a shot. We've, uh, I'm working hard. I'm putting in 12 hour days in the office here to get everything the way it needs to be. So I appreciate each and every customer I get and I take good care of them. So we'll, we'll take good care of anybody that comes our way. I will tell you, he does take good care of him because the minute I get off the phone with him, there's an invoice in my mailbox. <laughs> like, he's on the calculator when I'm talking to him on the phone. Yeah. I mean, it Sean is. is. Sean is funding Dooley's right. fly shop right now. <laughs> yes, I am. Actually, it's uh, Stonefly Nets, Cutthroat Leaders, Tennessee Trailers, and Pajuco Flats that are funding <laughs> Dooley's fly shop. It's, it's like a reverse pyramid scheme. They give me money, and I just give it straight to Nick. <laughs> you know, and uh, that's the way it is. But, yeah, we've got some big things from Tennessee Trailers coming out. Um, we're going to be having a – well, one, this year with COVID, everything was just so funky. And uh, we're going to be having some video of a different trailer here before too long. We're going to have a lot of video, and we're going to be doing – we're gonna, we're really kicking up our video game this year. I know I've said that last year, and, and everything sort of went hinky. Um, where we couldn't really get together. We weren't supposed to meet with people that were outside of our home, yada, yada, yada. But now that I'm back to teaching school and I have absolutely nothing to do all summer but drink beer, podcast, and fish, <laughs> we're going to be making a lot of videos. So you guys are going to see a lot of stuff. So go over and hit that like and subscribe. That's the American dream. Huh? What, Nick? I said that sounds like the American dream. I'm telling you, dude, it is. <laughs> And, you know, if you're an English teacher, they just expect you to be a drunk. <laughs> it's like, how can you teach Hemingway if you're not drunk like Hemingway? <laughs> um, so that's... I that's... couldn't do it. I could not deal with today's children. <laughs> you know, they're not that bad. They're like, I mean... No way. Honest to God, I'm going to tell you, I, I worked, I spent six years, I, I left education and worked for six years. Working with adults is exactly like working with high school students except high school students understand consequences. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well it's like, said. You know, my favorite word is do tomorrow. <laughs> All right, guys, here's the lesson, blah, blah, blah. We teach the lesson. They mm -hmm. get a half an hour. They got 15 minutes, quarter of an hour to, to, to finish up. They start talking. 
oh, I, I guess you want this due tonight at 8 o'clock. Y'all got internet. Y'all got Chromebooks. You want this due tonight at 8 o'clock? <laughs> yep. Just moving that. I just write the due date down. Every time they make me mad, I just move it up. <laughs> and it's a lot nicer than working with adults, you know. And, and but oh, anyway, yeah. like I said, we're gonna have a lot more. So uh, YouTube is uh, Kayak Flyer, I believe it's just Kayak Flyer. YouTube, Instagram, Kayak Flyer. Um, head to Nick Dooley's Fly Fishing. It's gonna be DooleyFlyFishing dot com. Check out Adam's store, guys. This has been great. We're gonna have to do it again. Um, Adam, what do you think? Next week, maybe you and I can get together again and talk to somebody. I think we've got a guest. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah think we, I think we'll get that ironed out, buddy. Yeah, I, th- I think I think we're going to have this pretty much every week, don't you, Adam? I think we got that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We've got Ludwig next week, who is a great fly tire, and uh, we're going to get him to start buying his stuff from, from dooleyflyfishing.com. That's right. And then that's we've right. got Average Joe Fishing. Yep, that's and right, yep. Then yeah. we've got a two-hour, but we're only going to drop one hour at a time, we've got the sales rep from Norvice who's going to be on, and he's going to be talking about a couple different things. So we are booking up. If you know somebody – oh, and I did send an email to Drew Gregory, Tennessee Trailers. Thank you very much, David, for getting me Drew Gregory's information, the most requested person. Hopefully we'll have Drew Gregory on in March or April. And April Vogel is on the short list. We have some friends that are going to tell her that she has to come on the show. Like they're going to be like, you have to go on. So that's going to be pretty cool. So we've got a really big season coming up, and this should be – this is starting our third year, our yeah. real third year. This is starting – this month is starting our real third year, so we're basically 130-some-odd episodes. So that's a big deal. If we kept yeah. track of our episodes, it would have helped. <laughs> we'll just start now. Episode one. Nick episode, yeah. Let's just call this season three, episode one. Let's just call it that. Yeah. And we'll yeah. start number them from here on out. The one with or the one where. The show of amazingness. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, oh, that's good. Thanks so much, buddy. Guys, um, we're gonna go ahead and, and let you go. We'll talk to you guys all Thank next you. week. We really appreciate everything you you fans do listening to us. Five star review us, comment on us, talk about how great we are. You can just you can you can shit on us the entire. Just give us that five star review and then just shit on us in the comments. It's fine because the it's five all that counts. Yeah, the five star review is the only thing they look at for rating the podcast. So we appreciate <laughs> it, guys. Take it easy. <laughs>